Hi, everyone. This is Ed Fernandez with The Ed Fernandez Show. Uh, wanted to make a quick note. Something very interesting happened when we uh, shot this show. And the show is called Who is Jesus? And I thought it was important to kind of point it out for you. That as soon as I say who is Jesus on the show, you'll notice that the quality of the camera changes. And that's never happened before. And so we believe that this message is very important and obviously something is trying to prevent it from going out, but uh, wanted to point that out to you. So thank you so much and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Ed Fernandez Show. I'm Tom Roussel. Cross from me, the man, Ed Fernandez. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for uh, watching. It's going to be a really powerful show today, Ed. I believe that in my heart. But before we get into it, you're a G-pop now, man. Oh, yeah. I had my grandson, uh, Cairo Eric Fernandez. He's my first grandchild. He was uh, six pounds, 14 ounces, born on August 18th. So now I'm G pop, pop, papa, G, but not grandfather. Not grandfather, not, not. I could do granddaddy. Granddaddy, okay. Yeah, granddaddy's good too. Okay. Yeah, it's Man. a trip. And thankful for Darian being here, even yeah, on no sleep. He, yeah, no sleep. The baby was up all <laughs> on night. On those levels. And, and you know, he he's a trooper. He came in just to get this audio down, but he's a new daddy now. Yeah. He left, I don't know, looking like a model and came back. He's looking a little homeless. <laughs> he's, he, he is. He but, is looking homeless. Man, you can yeah. tell he's, man, but I've never seen him smile more. Man. It's a rough, rough thing. <laughs> I'm glad it's over for me. <laughs> yeah. Right when, right when, uh, you know, you'd be holding Cairo, little baby Cairo. Uh, you told me right when there's a dirty diaper. Here you go, there man. You go, buddy. Yeah, start crying. Here you go, dude. <laughs> Here, take your baby. <laughs> well, man, congratulations. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Uh, Appreciate it. Thank I, you. So I much. can't imagine. Yeah. So let's do a little backstory on how we're here today. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Yesterday, a little more than 24 hours ago, I don't know what it was, 6 a.m. or something. I'm in the gym mm -hmm. and you have your air AirPods. And when they talk to you, Siri or whatever. So listen to podcast or something and it says message from Ed and it reads the message. And it was all along the lines of through your walking, through your reflection. We got to change the episode, man. Yeah. We got to change the episode tomorrow. I don't like, and we, we need to change it to who is Jesus. Yeah. So a lot of preparation goes into this show. Yeah. So I know it's not something just off the cuff. Like you, it's supposed to be who is Jesus today. Yeah. You know, um, we, we've done a lot of shows showing all the bling and, and showing all the goodness of God, but I don't want to, I don't want to get away from, who this show is for and the foundation of this show. And so I, you know, I, I text you guys at like four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, I'm like up at four o'clock because Avor waking me up, right? Avor, my dog. And as long as it's not like, hey, the whole site's broken. <laughs> yeah, this isn't no. working. Yeah. I'm fine. You can text yeah. me any hour. Yeah. But, so, you know, so that was, that was, you know, Message from Ed. I'm like, oh, uh, oh. You're like, oh, man, what broke? Like, hey, man, good morning. I was like, oh, okay, we're good, we're good. So I was, uh, you know, taking Avor on a hike, and uh, I was listening to this message by uh, Bill Johnson, and it was about, and, and for those who don't know, Bill Johnson is uh, the pastor at Bethel Church up in Northern California, and uh, it was about the presence and staying in his presence, and and I had to turn it off because I started praying and, and I just felt that 
you know, we needed to change the show because we were going to do about uh, risk, mm -hmm. you know, taking risk, which is... Which is we're going to do that we're show. We're going to do that show. It's going to be a great show. Um, but I, I think we need to set a foundation of, you know, who is Jesus and then who is Jesus to me. And so that's why I reached out to you and said, hey, look, uh, we got to change the show. And I'm, I'm a little nervous right now because, you know... I love him so much. I just want to do him proud and I want to make sure that I represent him well. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is a little risky for me, you yeah. know, cause I, you know, Ed Fernandez is, I'm not trying to boast or anything, but an unorthodox dude. I'm not just this right. normal guy. And there's this perception out there that a man of God has to be and look and sound a certain way. And that's just not me, right. you know? So I'm, I'm trying to balance that out a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I, I you're like Showtime Ed Fernandez, to yeah. me, you know. Yeah, yeah. You go on all these different, you know, TV mayor trade and everything. You're live. Everybody's seeing you. You don't say you're nervous. No, it doesn't make me nervous. But does this does make me nervous because this is a. And right now, I'm trying to contain my emotions. Right. Because this is very, very important to me. Right. And. Um, it's 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 my entire life. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, just help me. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just want to do you right. Yeah. And if I mean, it's a good time to talk about <clears throat> this is why we didn't name it the cash flow podcast. Yeah. That's what it was going to be called. We were going to talk about business. We were going to talk about success. We still talk about those things. Yeah. But it would pigeonhole you into something that you can't talk about what we're about to go into. That, which that's is absolutely correct. The biggest part of your life yeah, it, it is my life right right it, not it, the watches not the cars no it's my life it's your life jesus is my life right and and to not be able to talk about him because i'm in a box would be a sad thing for me yeah you know right so so i have notes here mm -hmm. but this is going to be kind of an organic conversation yeah do you think we should start about your childhood and not having a dad and that what Jesus has done for you? Well, or so should we start about where you s started in your relationship with well, Jesus? I think, so I'm going to, I want to talk about what Jesus is to me. Right. But I want to make sure that everyone out there understands who Jesus is uh -huh. first. Okay. And then I'll say, what is he to me? Okay. Jesus is the son of God, right? God put on flesh. He came down to earth and he walked with us. And in order for us uh, to be in the presence of God, there had to be an ultimate sacrifice, uh, an unblemished lamb. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus came and sacrificed his life for us. And through Jesus, we have access to the Father. And it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity. That is who Jesus is. Just want to make sure we were clear on that, right? Sure. Not some kook Jesus. Um, but now I, I'd like to say who Jesus is to me, right? Which uh, is what the whole show is going to be about, right? Yeah. It's and gonna and it's going to be series, right? Yeah. I mean, because we can't shove it all in a, an hour period of time. We, mm -hmm. You know, they've got this alarm thing going off in the office, and I want to make sure we get done before that stupid thing we, starts we buzzing. Test fire alarm <laughs> Yeah, today. and so we don't want to so. like... <laughs> It's okay, Avor. It's okay. Nothing's happening. He's under my feet thinking something's going on. I apologize. Um, but, you know, what Jesus is to me, and I, I didn't really realize um, that I needed Jesus even when I was a, a kid. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't realize that I was missing something because my mom filled in a lot of the gaps and she always tried to do the best she could, but she also came from a very broken family. So she was a, a broken mother trying to do the best not to break her, her kids. Right, my my brother, my me and my little brother, Alex, and 
It wasn't until I wanted to join the Boy Scouts. And I, it was the Boy Scouts or the Cub Scouts. I think one of the two. And we go to this school in this cafeteria. And I have my uniform on with my little blue thing and everything, you know. And and we sit down and, and whoever the main guy, I don't know what you call that guy, but he started talking and I started looking around. And there's not one mother in the room there was nothing but dads and their sons and that's when I realized I said well why don't I have a dad why where'd he go and so I started asking my mom about it and she couldn't give me a good answer she tried to kind of cover it up but that's what caused me to start asking the questions of well why didn't he want me right and and why did he leave me? What did I do wrong? And that was the first time I really experienced rejection. Wow. Yeah. And rejection has become something that was a trend over your life that you were trying to battle against. I, I didn't realize how big de- a big of a deal it, it 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 was. It it was still a big deal just up till recently in my life. Really? Yeah. You know. Rejection stems, I mean, it, 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 there's, rejection is, is so part of a foundation that if I had to use rejection as the foundation of a pyramid, then you would stack on top of that anger, rage, resentment, selfishness, right? And it all stems from rejection. Mm. Um, and so I, I, you know, went out through, I went through life feeling that way and, and not knowing what to do about it. So how did you, you know, you feel this rejection. You were talking to me, we had a conversation yesterday and is even, you know, as you got older, maybe an auto loan or a house or a condo or yeah. an, even an apartment you get rejected from your bad credit. That seems like normal to anyone else, but to you, it hit deeper because of what you were dealing with. And you didn't even realize that you said until. Yeah. I, I, you know, Ruth is a window shopper. And the reason why she's a window shopper is because she'll go around and proclaim, Lord, thank you for my house. Thank you for that nice car. That's she's not window shopping. She's proclaiming and thanking God ahead of time mm-hmm. for that thing. Yeah. For me, window shopping is a waste of time and rejection. And you know, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, yeah. Saying. You know, like you, you know, you, you, you're gonna go get a loan. Okay, you got to provide them all your financials. You don't qualify. That's rejection. You go buy a, a car. And you're looking and you don't want a sales guy to come up to you. Right. Right. Because you know you don't have good credit because you couldn't afford the car. But you just want to look at it and it's because it's so nice. But you avoid it because of rejection. Right. Um, You avoid certain venues. Right. I played football. I played football for a very long time. And not having my dad there and cheering me on. Not having a hug of a father, a, a, a real man rejection, right? I envy my son. I envy my daughters because my son is 25 years old. My daughters are grown. I've got a 14 year old, but I still hug them and kiss them. Right. Like they're little kids. Yeah. Right. I never felt that rejection. So how, how do you solve rejection? Right. How do you, You know, even if my father was still alive, my earthly father was still alive and he came into my life today, I would still feel rejected right? because he left me when I was two years old. Yeah. That doesn't solve the problem. Any other man coming into my life doesn't solve the problem. My mom could have got married. The guy could have been a great guy, but he wouldn't solve my problem. Still big because the original father, the bloodline 
yeah. rejected me. Mm -hmm. So how do you fix that? And that was the dilemma, you know? Where does Jesus fit into that? Well, you know, and this is what, you know, this is, goes to what, what, what is Jesus to me? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I didn't, I didn't know how real Jesus was until I really needed saving. Okay. Okay. And what do I mean by saving? I was so unhappy in my life. Um, I grew up poor, not as poor as Ruth, but I grew up poor. And I grew up missing a lot of things in life. Um, I, I didn't realize how, how much lack we had until I got older. And um, how Jesus became real to me is as you get older, the enemy, there is an enemy, his name's Satan, Lucifer, you call him the devil, what do you want to call him? Start stealing your identity. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough. You're never going to be good enough. This is how your life is always going to be. You got to take it into your own hands and you now have to make it happen because no one else is going to do it for you. And that steals your identity. So what did I end up doing? I ended up going the wrong direction. I ended up self-medicating myself. I ended up in, in a in mental hospital three times. I, I tried to kill myself three times. And I really don't care. Look, I'm not here... Excuse me. Sure. Whew. I'm sorry. It's real stuff, man. This show is not for clicks. It's not for subscribers. It's not for followers. It's to help people, right? And um, I was doing so many things that were so not my character that one day I got on my hands and knees and throughout this time, my mom was praying for me and at the time I thought she was crazy you know, she's praying for me in tongues. We're filled by the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. I don't, I, you know, that's who I am. And uh, she's always been praying for me, always been praying for me. And I, one day, I was in the garage, and, and we lived in downtown Fullerton in, in the neighborhood. It's, you know, it's the hood, right? That's where all the poor people live and all the people on, on, on government assistance and, and, and things like that. And, and I was in the garage and I was so unhappy and I got on my hands and knees and I said, God, if, if you're for real, uh, either you save me or I'm going to die. And th that was the day that changed my life. Um, I got arrested for some of the things that I was doing. By the grace of God, I didn't get in big trouble or I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today. Right. But I got arrested and, in, in, and when I was arrested, that's when I really started understanding who Jesus was to me. So... And I've heard this story before, but it wasn't like you were kind of like, if you're real, show up. You still got arrested. <laughs> yeah. He didn't like, oh, yeah. He's not like, you're, oh, you're, you're good. You're not going to get in trouble. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I still got arrested. So how did that journey go from getting arrested? You, how, why did you think he was real after that? What happened to make you th know? So I got arrested and... 
And on my bunk, there was this little red book. I mean, it was like this big. And I read it and it was the name of the book was The Power of the Name of Jesus. And I read that little tiny book because in that place, you know, when you go in there, you got to choose who you're going to hang out with. Yeah. That's just the rules. Yeah. Right. I'm Puerto Rican, so I can hang out with the blacks and the Samoans. Or I can hang out with the Latinos. Right. And when you walk in, the first question is, is who are you with? What car are you going to ride in? Right. That's right. the term, right? What car are you going to ride in? So I decided to go with the the brothers and the Samoans, right? And in there, my mom sent me a Bible, right? And I started reading the Bible in there. And, and the words started talking to me. It's like, it was weird. I, I didn't understand what was happening, but this the words of this book were alive to me. They were talking to me. And, and I, I was so like, this was like something I've never experienced before. It was like, I, I couldn't understand it. I, I, but I couldn't get enough of it. I couldn't get enough of it. And I was just reading and reading and reading and reading. And it was talking and talking and talking and talking to the point to where, I, I didn't feel like I was incarcerated. I felt like I was free, even though there were bars around me and, and the, in the natural world, I was incarcerated, but inside of me, I was free and I didn't understand it. And it wasn't until one day, so when you're in there, and then look, I'm taking a huge risk saying all this stuff, yeah. but I don't really care. You know, um, when I was in there, and, and I bet you Ruth is going to gotta go, I don't know about this, and I don't know about that, and I don't know about this, but we'll see, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I know her. <laughs> but I was in there, in there, and some guy asked me for my Nestle Crunch wrapper, for my Nestle Crunch bar. And for those who don't know, Nestle Crunch has aluminum foil yeah. around the, the chocolate. And because this guy who came and asked me for it came back from court. And somehow he was able to smuggle crack co cocaine in. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Mm -hmm. And so he showed it to me and I said, that looks like a piece of cookie. And I put it in my mouth. And as soon as I put it in my mouth, it numbed my mouth and I threw it out and I knew that it was cocaine. Yeah. And... As soon as I did that, remember, I was free. I felt free. As soon as I did that, the bars started closing in on me. And I remember the little red book. And I sat down on my bunk and I said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's all I knew. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And as soon as I said that, the bars pulled away. And the peace came again. Wow. Wow. I felt like, because when I went in there, I was self-medicating. But when that happened to me, I f felt like I was in the middle of the ocean. And if you go into the ocean, there's no lights. Right. And it was pitch dark and I was just treading water. And it felt like my leg was cut open and I was bleeding and the fear that I had of something eating me under the water that I could not see coming was the kind of fear that I had. Mm. Later on, I didn't realize that fear scared me straight. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you know, I'm going to stop here and go back. I just remembered something. Okay. I was, before I was married, I was dating a girl and she was Catholic. And I was really into my crazy life at that time. But I used to go to church on Sundays with her once mm -hmm. in a while, right? Uh, to remove my guilt, because I felt guilty all the time. 
And one day, and this is the first time I've ever felt the presence of God. One day I went into this Catholic church, you know, and you, you do this and you kneel and you, and you sit down in a pew. And I didn't even know what the priest was preaching about. But there was this presence that I couldn't shake off and I was crying like sobbing, crying in the middle of this Catholic church. And I'm like saying to myself, what the heck is wrong with me? I couldn't shake it. I couldn't shake it. It was just this presence that was causing me to just weep like uncontrollably and her family. And she's looking at me like, what is wrong with this guy? I didn't know what was happening. It wasn't until later in life when I, now, like today, I know the presence of God that I knew that was the Holy Spirit showing me that he was with me. And that was the first time I felt the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, when that event occurred, when I was in jail, when I got out of jail, just like the devil, first thing I, I get off the bus, right? And who shows up? One of my homeboys. Hey, where you been? Yada, yada, yada. And the first thing he wants to do is go get high. And I'm like, cool, let's go. Right? Remember? Self-medicating. Yeah, of course. As soon as I try to do that, that presence of being in the water about to get eaten kept falling on me, falling on me every time, falling on me, falling on me, falling on me to the point where I got scared straight. Wow. And that was the, the first time that People would say, Ed, what's wrong with you? Are you now what? A preacher? You're, you know, you a Bible guy now? And I used to tell him, heck yeah. And and that's when I left that life. And and that's when Jesus became so real to me. And, you know, I'm gonna I, I know there's a a potential agenda here and a potential we got there's some no, notes no, there's here no and agenda. stuff. And I know I'm jumping around. But I'm here to kind of talk about Jesus in a, and what Jesus is to me in a practical way. Because people, unfortunately, a lot of people think that Jesus is this myth. Um, he's some kind of prophet. Um, that the gospel was written by men and so... If men read, wrote it, how could it be like legitimate? And what is this Holy Ghost thing and Holy Spirit, whatever? What is all this stuff? But, you know, the funny thing is, is that you and I can sit here right now and we can do this. Breathe in. What are you breathing in? Oxygen. How do you know it's oxygen? Because that's what I was taught. That's how somebody told me. Can you feel it? I can feel it enter my lungs, but I can't tangibly can you Can you touch it. it? No. Can you see it? No. Can, can I feel it? Is it real? Yes. How do you know it's real? Right. It gives you life. Right. It gives you life. Who told you where oxygen came from? I don't remember my teacher's name in biology, but, you know, like it came right. from a book, right? It came from a it book. It came from a book from a scientist who did some kind of science saying that trees, you know, take in CO2, yep. right? And then they convert it and it becomes oxygen. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, whoever out there, I'm not a scientist, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, I haven't been in school a long time, but we read the book that says this is how oxygen is created and believe it. Right. Even though the only proof we have is life. Mm -hmm. That's the gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus. We have men who read a, wrote a book telling us who he is and what he does. And the only proof we have that it's for real is life. The difference is we won't know it's for real until it's too late. Because there's two deaths. Mm -hmm. 
your physical body and your spiritual body, mm -hmm. right? right? If you don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you know Jesus, there's only one death. Your physical body, but your spirit lives forever with him. Don't make the mistake. Don't make the mistake of trying to discern whether the book is for real by the time you get there, because it's too late. Mm. And that's how, that's how Jesus is real to me. You know, I'm going to stop there and let you ask some questions so that it can give me for some sure. different direction. So this is, these are just a couple things that I noticed from your story. And one is that m many people don't experience that encounter you were talking about their entire life. Right. God, Jesus, whatever we want to call him. His only name is Jesus, big right. boy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. his name. Okay. All right. Got Ain't it. no other name. He was, it's, he started trickling in on you and showing you pieces of him. Yeah. And then when you pray and say, if you're real, you know, if you save me, then I'm, I'll believe in you. Yeah. And the way he does it is what you took, you took, you know, self-medicated to escape. Yeah. I didn't like who I was. But he changed the one thing that in your life that was helping you escape from your life that you didn't like. And then when you did try that again, you wanted to escape that. You wanted to go back to his life. So when the bars are coming in, the ocean, you're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. You wanted to run to him, not run to the drugs. And which is a crazy, people get. I was so scared. It, 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 it's called reverence and it's a fear. You know, in Revelations, in the Bible, it talks about when the God shows up, that those don't know that don't know Him have so much fear that they run into caves, hoping that the mountain will right. collapse on them. Yeah, that kind of fear or reverence is unexplainable. You cannot comprehend it. It. Right. It is the scariest thing ever. And, and I thank God that I experienced that fear because that fear was stronger than any self-medication that I wanted to do to myself. Right. And that's how I got sober. Right. Right? Yeah, the fear of God is something that... Fear of God is no joke. It's no joke. It's, it's no joke, you know? Reverence, exactly what you said. It's, it's, not, it's not an afraid... It's bigger than that. It, 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 you can't define it. It, right. it. There's no real word to explain it. Right. Not right. in in this language anyway. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So all your homeboys yeah. are saying, oh, you some Bible thumper now, yeah. you some Jesus freak. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, I am. You told me a story. Mm -hmm. You're in your studio apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you would sit it's up, cool. you would cool. sit a chair across yeah. from you? Yeah. Tell me more about yeah. that. Yeah, so I was so in love with Jesus. I mean, my life turned upside down. Yeah. Uh, I was a guy who would go to the clubs, uh, hang out all night, party, womanizer, scary guy. And when Jesus came to my life, it, it totally changed me where I had no more friends. I had I, I, everybody who I used to hang out with, I had nothing in common with. So I, I didn't have anyone to talk to or nothing. So it, I, this was the first little uh, studio that I rented for myself because I was living with my mom the whole time. But this is what when I started becoming responsible and becoming a man, got I, I got my own little studio. And, and I used to... Um, I used to pull up a chair, and I know this sounds crazy, but I used to put up the chair, and the chair was empty, and I would pretend Jesus was sitting there, and I would ask him so many questions about my life, mm -hmm. and it was so comforting, even though I couldn't see him, even though I couldn't touch him, I knew he was giving me life. Yeah. I knew he was giving me life, and you know... 
going back to this rejection thing, he never rejected me, ever, ever. He would say to me, not right now, maybe later, but he would never say no. He would never reject me. And when I, when I came to a point where Jesus wasn't rejecting me, I still had, I still had a lot of issues, but I knew, I remember one time Jesus showed me this dream. It was like a vision. And I didn't know what to make of it, but he showed me my heart. And it's kind of like the Grinch cartoon, yeah. right? When you see the Grinch's heart mm -hmm. and it's all sick and all looking nasty and all of a sudden he feels a little bit of love and it goes boom. Jesus had my heart in his hand and it was black and sick. And all of a sudden it changed into this healthy, strong muscle and I woke up and that made me call Jesus the orange peeler. And, and I know it sounds crazy. But we, when we go through all these things in life, we're always trying to search for a spiritual solution. We're going to these different religions and different churches. We're going to see mediums. We're doing crystals. We're looking for healers. We're doing tarot cards. We're playing with Ouija boards. And we're just trying to find a spiritual solution. Psych psychedelics. Yeah, we're trying, yeah, we're trying to find a spiritual, solution, uh, a spiritual solution to our spiritual issues. And when that dream happened... I remember grabbing an orange one day and, you know, was eating this orange. And the first thing I, I don't use a knife. I grab it and I bite into it to start to peel it. And when I bit into it, it was bitter, super bitter. And as I started peeling off the layers of the skin, all of a sudden I open up the orange and I take a bite of this orange and it's the sweetness of this good fruit. And that's why I call Jesus, Jesus the orange peeler because my heart was so messed up that I needed someone to come in and, 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 and peel all the, all the things that have built up over my life that I couldn't control. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get out of it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to change it. Until Jesus came into my life and then he, he started peeling all these layers off and he's still peeling layers off, but it's not as many as I had before. And, and now the pureness of my heart, the person that I was born to be, the identity that was stolen from me from the enemy no longer is who I am. The trueness of what I was born to do is now who I am today. And that was only because of Jesus, my orange peeler. And that's who Jesus is to me. There's a couple other words we were talking yesterday about, mm -hmm. and you called him a friend, yeah, a mentor, yeah, someone who understands you, someone you run to when you felt misunderstood. And I think a lot of people think that it's like, I love your analogy and what you were shown there because people think it's like, you're a different, you are a different person, but you still have to peel back the layers. You yeah. still have to uh, work through everything you dealt with before this moment. Yeah. And it's, you're still, we're all works in progress still. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But life's getting, your heart's getting sweeter. Right. Yeah. It's, um, I'm not, I trip myself out when I do certain things and go, well, why did I just do that? Because I was so used to being so angry, enraged, controlling. I would instill fear in people to get my way. I would manipulate you. I would control you. Thank you, Kevin. And, I was waiting uh, for those to come out. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, 
you're saying some profound stuff and I didn't want to grab, <laughs> try and look for some tissues, but yeah. And, um, I guess I lost my train of thought. Well, let's talk about where I know I keep on referring to a conversation we had yesterday, but, but I think it's important Yeah. about the sheep. No, oh, yeah, that's so, shepherd. that is so, yeah. It's I mean, so good. And it's so like, you know, people don't know that Lucifer, Satan, the enemy, was the most beautiful angel in heaven. Right. He is an angel of light. He doesn't have a pitchfork. He doesn't have claws and, you know, a mask. And he doesn't come at you like this crazy monster. He comes as an angel of light. And he is powerful. He does have power, right? And in in in, I think it's in James. I was reading right before. I think it's James, but if it's not, it's the it's the, it's the book right before Revelations where Michael, the archangel, says. I paraphrase. Look, I'm not going to fight you. He's talking to Satan because Satan is so powerful. Look, I'm not going to fight you, but the Lord rebuke you. So even. Michael, the archangel, who's a warrior angel for God, said, ah, time out. I don't think I want to get in a cage with you right now because you're all that in a bag of chips. Right. But the one who has the power, the one who created you, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So if M Michael, the archangel, who is, if not the power, most powerful, but one of the most powerful archangels, for the army of God said, time out. I don't think I want to fight you. You've got to think about how powerful he is and how deceptive he is and how he can come to an angel of light to think, make you think it's God. The Bible talks about that. My sheep know me by my voice. So you can go out to the middle East and the shepherd has his clothes on. He has the same hat on. He puts on the same cologne, same deodorant, brushes his teeth with the same tooth, toothpaste. He smells like the guy, looks like the guy. And you got two identical guys. And they both speak to the sheep. The sheep, the sheep know their master's voice. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you come in looking like the master. If the master's voice if that deceptive person does not have that voice that the sheep know, the sheep are not going to move. And that's what has to happen now in these end times because deception is such a big thing that if the enemy came to me right now, and it happened to me one time, it happened to me one time. I was working at Cornerstone and we were going through the most difficult times that I've ever done financially. And I was on my hands and knees in my office and I was praying. And I was questioning God. I'm like, God, why, 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 why? And this voice came. And the voice said, you need to leave. This is not where you need to be. And I sat there. And it was this soft gentle voice and, and by the way god does talk and i sat there and i said i was so confused and i said wait a minute that's not it's not what you've been telling me this whole time and all of a sudden this presence came this heat and i and this other voice said do you trust me i said yes lord i trust you then trust me Right then and there, I knew that the first voice was the fake shepherd. And the second voice was my shepherd, my master. And so we got to be very careful that we don't go into areas thinking that God is showing up. Because look, Satan will show up. He will make you think he's God. He will bob and weave and make things happen in your life. To think you're good, please make sure you know your master's voice so you're not being deceived. And that's when I learned the difference between two voices.
And how do you make sure, how, how do you talk? Let's talk about just your prayer, like speaking yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. That's how, you know, because of the time that you spend and you know, when he's speaking to you, that's how you know the difference between the enemy and. Well, Jesus. you need to have a relationship, right? Right. Jesus is not a religion. The religion was made up by man. He's not a religion. Religion says you got to be a good guy. You got to be perfect. You got to do this. 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 They have all these rules and people go, well, I can't meet those expectations and those expectations are boring. I don't want to do that. So miss me, Jesus. That's not Jesus. It's just not Jesus. Right? I am not, people think that a man of God has to look, sound, act a, a, a certain way. I am a man of God. I'm anointed. I'm a powerful, anointed man of God. But I am not your like normal Christianese floating off the ground with wings on my back and a halo. I am not perfect. But I am a man of God. And what I want to try to show people is that, look, you don't have to follow all these rules. There is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are rules. But guess what? Guess who followed all those rules? Jesus followed all those rules. He never broke one. And then he died on the cross. So when I say, in Jesus' name, when I'm done with my prayer, in Jesus' name, Lord, forgive me for my sins, in Jesus' name. God the Father goes, what sin? Mm. What sin? I don't see no sin. But unfortunately, we get so condemned because the enemy comes and says, you're a hypocrite. You ain't no following no Jesus. Look at this and this and this and this and this. But when you know who you are, and you have the power and the authority under the name of Jesus. And you say, shut up, you stupid lying devil. The truth is not in you. The Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. The father goes, I don't see anything here. You're good. That's who Jesus is to me. He's my friend. He's my friend. He's the father I never had. He's my mentor. He's my business partner. He has made me a good husband, a good father, a good friend. I'm sorry, but that's who Jesus is to me. That's who he is to me. And I just wish that, I wish that I can put it in a bottle and just give it away to everybody for free. All you got to do is drink the Kool-Aid. Just drink the Kool-Aid. You know, you, you, you have tried everything. You've tried everything. You've tried psychiatrists. You tried doctors. You, you tried medicine. You tried religion. You tried drugs. You tried everything and it ain't working. Why not drink a little Kool-Aid of some Jesus? What's the worst that can happen? That you would be where you are today? Or a miracle can happen and he can change your entire life. Where's the risk? There is no risk. Drink some Jesus. Drink the Kool-Aid. It's not bad. It's wonderful. <laughs> Man, that's some powerful stuff. When you say this company, yeah. this watch, this car, everything is because of him. What do you mean by that? Because that we've heard that in other episodes. Yeah, people can hear you saying that. You know, you yeah. say when people come up to you at the gas station, "Oh man, how'd you get this car? What do you do?" Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, my my wife calls it Kingdom Economics. She wanted me to name the podcast Kingdom Economics. So this is a plug for you, Mama.
the Bible says that we, we're going to have heaven on earth. What's in heaven? The Bible talks about that heaven has streets of gold. The Bible talks about that there's no sickness and there's no disease in heaven. There's no depression. There's no sadness. No sorrow. There's no death. There's none of that. And if the Bible says that we can have earth that is, it is in heaven. Then why can't I have all that here? Why? If my father, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, created the heavens and the earth and owns all the cattle on a thousand hills and owns all the gold and silver on the earth. And I am the child of the most high God. And I sit at the table and eat as I please. I'm not under the table begging for bread. And that that's my king. Then why should I not be able to prosper? Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, all these very wealthy billionaires, not saying they don't know Jesus. I don't know those guys. But ain't no one judging those guys when they fly in their private jet. Ain't no one judging those guys when they have house here and house there and house here and, and driving this car and driving that car. No, they're all successful, really good men. But as soon as a man of God starts balling out of control, oh, you fake. You fake. It's all about the money for you. No, it's not all about the money for me. Because you know what? My father owns everything, and by the grace of God, he just allows me to use it. It's all his stuff. But guess what? People watch this show. Why? If I was broke, okay, broke, driving a Ford Pinto, living in a one-bedroom apartment with cockroaches flying around in the middle of the night, do you think they'd pay attention? No, they ain't going to pay attention. But as soon as you show a plane and you show exotic cars and you show watches and you show trips and you do this and you do that. Whoa, wow, whoa, who's that guy? And then you got to drop the name Jesus. Okay, they're confused now. Yeah. Right? They're confused. Wait, right. wait a minute. Uh, godly people ain't supposed to have money. God, that ain't humble. In order to be humble, you need to be broke. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Straight up. It's a lie from the pit of hell. What we do here and what we're building here at 1031 Crowdfunding is we are a spear. And we are the tip of that spear. And God is using it to fight his battles. That's what we are here for. Because guess what, brother? You write a check, you change the world. Look at George Soros. Stinking. I'm not, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to chill right there. I just, not see, even gonna, I just see Ruth. I'm not going to say nothing. Right? <laughs> right? Hold number. We might have she to cut that gonna out. Get it. She's going to get it. <laughs> and the red light's blinking. <laughs> right? yeah, some cue cards like, no. <laughs> right. But he writes checks. Yeah. And influences elections. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates, he writes checks. He's buying up a ton of farmland, mm -hmm. controlling our food. So why, if I follow Jesus and I love my father, why can't I write checks to change the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look out, because we're going to write some big checks. Right. And we're going to change the world. Right. I'm not playing. I, I'm a, I'm, I love my father so much. And I said, Lord, whatever you want. And that's the difference, brother. I'm going to tell you, that's the difference. And I didn't know I was going to go here, but that's the difference. You, most people have Jesus as their savior. You're good. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and died on the cross and rose on the third day, you shall be saved. That's what the Bible says. But is he your Lord? Jesus is my Lord and Savior. You know what the Lord is? Whatever you want, man. You want me to stop cussing? I'm going to stop cussing. You want me to stop 
watching porn. I I'm done with that, Lord. You, you want me to stop cheating people? I I I'm done with that, Lord. You want me to stop being a bad husband? Uh, 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 whatever you want, Father, I'm done with that, Lord. You want me to be a bad dad? Uh, whatever you want, Father, he's my Lord. And when he becomes your Lord, then he can start trusting you with power. Mm -hmm. And when he could trust you with power, he could trust you with things because he knows the things don't own you. You own the things. They know, he knows that you not, the things are not your identity, that the things do not control you. Then he starts going, what do you want? See, he never says no. He never rejects you. He just says, not right now. Mm -hmm. I got to wait until I can trust you. Can he trust you? Can he trust you? A lot of people want to soar. They want to soar in the air. They want to stand on the cliff and they see all these people soaring in the air with those parachutes and taking the wind and going wherever they want to go, but they don't want to jump. Mm -hmm. They don't want to jump. And in order for Jesus to be your Lord, you have to jump. It's scary. It's scary to give up your anger. You know why it's scary? Because my anger was my shield. My anger shielded me from being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. If I can show you rage and I can be angry with you and intimidate you and control you, you cannot touch me inside here. Right? right? So jumping off the cliff, you got to be a good husband. You got to serve your wife. Serving is not weakness. Serving is strength. Jesus, God, the creator of heaven and earth, got on his knees and washed the feet of his disciples. Mm -hmm. That's power. Mm. You want power? Start serving. Mm. Not only, don't serve yourself. That's what the enemy will tell you. It's all about you, Ed. How come you can't have this? How come you can't have that? How come you can't have this? Poor you, poor you, poor you. No one understands. You lying, stupid devil. It ain't poor me. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. Mm -hmm. I don't need pity. I'm not tired. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm powerful. In the na in mighty name of Jesus. So you got to look. I know I'm preaching. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know it was going to go here. And people may not like it. And I don't really care. But this is what Jesus means to me. Mm -hmm. So the viewers, you're talking about jumping off. You talked about you laying on your face. And you talked about it not being about religion. Yeah. Just in closing, can you simplify somebody wanting to yeah. experience who is this Jesus? Jesus is not complicated. We make Jesus complicated. Here's what Jesus is. Jesus wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And what does that mean? Mm. Jesus wants to peel all the layers that have been accumulated over all the years of your life from all the trauma you have been in. And he just wants to peel those layers off to get to the pureness of who you are. He is not here to hurt you. He's not here to take from you. He's not here to control you. He is here to bless you. He is here to give you a good life. He's here to make you happy, to give you purpose, to give you identity, to make you who you were born to be. It's not hard. And all you have to do is get on your knees 
and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. I don't know what to do or how to do it, Lord, but I know you do. So can you change my life, please? Can you come into me and just give me something different? That's all you got to do. Reading the Bible will come later. Going to church will come later. You don't need to be a theologist. I mean, you don't have to understand theology and you don't have to be a scholar and you don't even need to learn how to pray. It will all come later. But you do have to make him the Lord and Savior of your life and then hold on, man. <laughs> I can't get enough yeah. of this Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Right. I think we got to close on that. I know this is going to be a series. Yeah. Because there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. This is, this is the tip of that spear. Yes, I sir. Think. Yes, so, sir. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, for, thank you. Thank you for sharing and check us out every Friday. Yeah, every Friday. Every Friday. Uh, we, we're, getting, we're getting some good... Uh, five star reviews on Spotify. Thank you. So keep on doing that. Comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, just if you're if you're here still, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. watching, man. We love you guys. You're the best thing ever. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Till next time. <laughs> <laughs>